And for this next fight, we got the first of the two tough finale fights. This one has a little bit of steam to it, man. I mean, both these guys don't like each other, Brad Katona and Cody Gibson. And uh, Gibson is promising a knockout, and Katona is someone that, you know, is a weird guy. So he didn't really show much emotion, but you could tell that they are in a bit of a grudge match here. And it's two veterans. Obviously, they did that veterans versus prospects thing where... The veterans kind of smoke through uh, all the prospects, and there's no prospects left. The two uh, tough finales are both veteran matchups. So Brad Katona, he's looking to become the second or the first man ever to win two um, Ultimate Fighters. And Cody Gibson, he was in the UFC back in the day. He even fought Aljo before, and he's trying to work his way back into the company. And stylistically, when you look at how these two guys fight, I think it's going to be pretty obvious what both their game plans are going to be. Cody Gibson, he's one of the biggest bantamweights that I've seen before. I mean, the guy's huge. He's like 5'10", 5'11". Um, very rangy guy. And he manipulates distance and can control range really well. Like we saw him land that flying knee victory on the Ultimate Fighter. And he's really good with his uh, distance striking, straight punches, his jab. He... um does a really good job pulling fighters into his shots. And he's a dangerous guy on the feet because of his length and his uh, technical abil ability from the outside. But his wrestling is good, but it's just that's what's been his issue throughout his career. He's had guys that have been able to get under him, take him down, hold him against the cage, nullify him, and uh, even submit him a couple times and beat him that way. So Gibson, even though he has a good wrestling background in his own right, he struggles against guys that can out-wrestle him. So Brad Katona, he kind of brings that style where he's a short, compact guy. He'll switch stance and kind of uses the striking to uh, disguise his entries and then wants to push you against the cage and hold you against the fence. And I wouldn't even say he has great wrestling, but he has really good cage control, um, really good head positioning, and kind of just hold you there, chip away with knees, elbows, get you tired, and then... Um, Rich and repeat, man, burn the clock and win by decision. He's not really the most entertaining fighter, but he's a uh, low risk and doesn't have a high likelihood of being finished or putting himself in super danger. And he wins a lot of minutes, so he can go out there and get decision victories. He's done really well since leaving the UFC. He's gone over to Brave. He's become the champion for them and beating some pretty high level guys. He's the younger guy. Um,. I feel like stylistically, unless Gibson can just catch him and knock him out early, I think Katona's probably going to end up wearing him down and beating him by decision in kind of a lackluster fight where he has a lot of cage control. Um, Gibson, I've just seen him lose that type of fight too often, especially when it's like 1-1 going in the third. I have a little bit more faith, honestly, in Katona digging it out than I do in Gibson. So that's... Why I'm going to go with Brad Katona to win this one via decision. I just think he's going to have a little bit more cage control time, a little bit better cardio, and I feel like he's going to nullify Gibson a little bit. Gibson is the better fighter to me, but I think Katona, you know, with the rules of MMA, is going to be able to kind of stymie him and uh, win that decision.